Welcome back to Promoted. I'm your host, Felicity Theory, CEO and co-founder of We Aspire. I'm joined by the fabulous Renee Wooden, engineer, pilot, future NASA astronaut. I'm putting it out there, Renee. Yes, it's good to have a vision board. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. It is the Promoted podcast where we help you get promoted and be great when you get there. Now, today I'm taking over the Ask Me Anything session and I've got a question for you, Renee. So, a few years ago, my husband got invited to this epic wedding in Mexico and Amazing. we had planned it all out. We'd got the we'd, you know, time off work to go and then he had a work commitment. So it was delivery time. They were raising money for an investment fund. It was crunch time. It was really the key crucial weeks that he needed to be on the job to make this happen. So we decided not to go to the wedding in Mexico. Devastating. Do we, yeah, <laughs> devastating. Do we regret it? Yes. And <laughs> now he's no longer with that company. And it was such an interesting reflection. I mean, it's pretty something frivolous, like going to a wedding in Mexico. But this guy's awesome. It would have been the best party. And cr- we would have created all these amazing memories together. Yeah. A few years later, we've now got two kids. And it's unlikely that we will go to a wedding in Mexico slash go to Mexico anytime soon. And it just made me think, this question comes up a lot, is will this matter in five years' time? And I think when you're in a situation when you're in the role at work, it can be so tricky to go, does this matter? And what are the things that are really going to matter? So I feel like you're someone who's really amazing at thinking strategically. You think far ahead and you are really considered in what you're going to spend your time on. Mm. Is that a question that you've asked yourself? How Would you have gone to the wedding in Mexico firstly? Oh. I feel like you were. Oh, what was the matter? <laughs> <commitment? laughs> that would be pretty good to, to avoid going to Mexico for a wedding. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, I probably would have been to Mexico, to be honest. I definitely would have been in support of that. I love a good adventure. I'm very spontaneous. So, <laughs> um, All right. Where do I begin? I think... Uh, This is such an interesting and such a great question because I think we go through these moments in our lives where we hyper fixate on what's right in Mm. front of us and we forget about the bigger picture. And it's very easy to do. And I'm definitely, um, you know, uh, subject to this as well. So uh, I have a great example recently, actually, where I was having these challenges uh, with different people within my stakeholder group. And I didn't like some of the behaviors I was seeing in the workplace. And so, um, and I was taking it quite personally, actually, I was getting a bit worked up. Uh, I was feeling offended and I went to a mentor external to the business. And I was like, this is what I'm going through. How do I cope with this situation? And he said, why do you care so much? Mm -hmm. That was the first question. And I was like, um, and he's like, why do you keep expecting a different result? every time when you're doing the same things and they're doing the same thing. And I was mm. like, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, damn it, they're right. As soon as as soon as he pointed out to me that if I keep expecting a different result, then I'm only going to be the one that continues to get hurt. Um, and as soon as I lower my expectations and stop caring so much about the outcome, then um you know it's it's essentially wasted energy Mm. trying to control an outcome that's not not within my power of control sphere of control so uh as soon as my mentor pointed pointed that out to me it kind of just allowed me to breathe Mm. and it just allowed me to have this whole new perspective around I actually can't out influence the outcome I can't change it so I'm just gonna let it go and as soon as I did that it was just a weight off my shoulders to be honest yeah (laughs) So in that case, you know, I thought that that was something that was incredibly important to me and it was an expectation of mine that I didn't have met and I was able to really let it go. So how does that relate back to our question around will this matter in five years' time? In this case, it didn't matter and it it took one simple line from a mentor to say stop caring so much. Mm. Um, that perspective is so valuable. It's incredibly valuable, Yeah. yeah, and it's honestly been the most empowering outcome for me because ever since he mentioned that to me I just don't care what the outcome is anymore (laughs) like and essentially what it was is because I had this expectation around how I wanted people to treat me and what Mm -hmm. I was willing to put up with at work 
And I think when you're in the workplace, you don't get to have that expectation met. You can control that within your personal life. If people upset you or, you know, betray your values or whatever that looks like, you can easily take a step back and and move away. But if it's one of your key stakeholders, then all of a sudden you have to remain there Mm -hmm. and you have to work with them and learn how to work with them. So for me, um, it's actually getting a lot of clarity around if if things are in your sphere of control, then how do you just manage around that? How Mm -hmm. do you... Um, you know, just fixate on the things that are actually within your power of control. So um, that's perspective. That's a really big lesson for me Mm. and it's been really valuable. Having that mentor advice is is so incredibly helpful and it's something that I draw on a lot in as well. And actually just last year we had this challenge come up, came up within the business and the client had a particular view of it and so I kind of just like hooked onto that and went that's the perspective that's the, that is the way that it is I need to um do whatever I can do to get the client back on side and I did speak with a mentor about it who's a really experienced CEO and he said oh nah like not at all oh no nah. like, nah, it's not the issue like, I don't actually agree with the client I think something different and I was thought first of all I thought wow, I had not even considered there could be another point of view because I got so hooked on wanting to please the client and have the right outcome for them. Mm. them. And I'm such a people pleaser, it's like so automatic for me that that comes up. And then he's a really experienced CEO, so I'm going to really trust what he says. He's seen a lot more than I have. And then he said, here's why I don't agree with them. And it helped me see another perspective and another view. So I think the first bit was kind of getting unstuck from that mindset and helping see that other perspective was really helpful to go, yeah, you know, does this, what's the significance of this and doesn't matter. And I think the other point you picked up on too, Renee, is that the immediate view and then the long-term view, whether it's within your role or your career or the project that you're working on, often projects that I've been working on in my career, these big infrastructure projects. And it goes, well, if I'm, if I'm not here, it's going to get built anyway and be okay with that as well. So I think that can be tricky to have that I feel, yeah, I feel almost like short-term immediate view and Great. the long-term view. How do you balance that? Because it's I think that's hard. It's hard for me to do anyway. Yeah, and I think this is where knowing your values and your boundaries incredibly well is the thing mm. that really sets your compass on these sorts of things. So, you know, if I think about the sorts of people I want in my life and making a decision as to, okay, this person isn't really, you know, adding to my life in the ways that I'd hoped, they really want to spend a lot of time with me, which is great and it's really nice and complimentary, but... Um, I've got all these other priorities. Mm. I've got all these values that maybe don't align or, um, you know, I'd like to spend my time in these ways because that fills my cup up. So unfortunately I have to pass up this opportunity with this person or Mm. say no to this project. Um, Another great example is if you're thinking about your long-term vision and mission and what you want to contribute to the workplace or in your life uh, and you will constantly have doors open around you. So especially if you're good in your role and you're ambitious and you're wanting to be in in leadership positions, it's going to be there, right? Yeah, Yeah. agree, actually. And that's a really good point to call out. Maybe you're early in your career or you're not yet on the path where, um, you know, you want to continue down that track um, or you haven't figured out what you're passionate about just yet. Just know that there will always be distractions, Mm. uh, whether that's a person, a project, a job. Um, and so one of the best things that you can do is really understand what you value, uh, what you find joy in, how you, um, how, what are the things that light you up, that fill your cup up, that make you a better person, a more enjoyable person to be around? Who's around you? Do they emulate those things with you? And then really making decisions in line with that. Mm. Now, as for Mexico <laughs> and going to that wedding, Again, that commitment must have been so in line with Michael's values at the yeah. time yeah. and his true ambitions mm. for him to pass up that opportunity. That's right, yeah. But if it wasn't and it was mm. a decision made out of haste, mm. um, out of um, I feel like guilt fear of missing out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, like looking bad at work, like that often comes up for me. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I don't want to, yeah. Look like I'm not serious about my career is one thing that I know is automatic for me to think about, yeah. But does that matter? No. No, it doesn't. Like you're entitled to holidays. Go on your holiday, you know what I mean? (laughs) Well, should I tell you the end of the story? Yeah, please do. Tell us. Uh, So so we didn't go to Mexico, but it's devastating for you. Devastating for me. (laughs) still, it's on the list to go. And, but a new opportunity came up. And one thing that we often talk about internally at We Aspire is if something goes 
wrong or doesn't go the way that we want it to go. We say good, like, like embrace that, like good, what opportunity can come from this? And, <laughs> and yes, my husband put the our kit at Winston's shoes in the dryer washed and dried them um they melted and his response was good yesterday which I'm not talking about that <laughs> good it is not good it's an opportunity to anyway yeah. finally discovering the air learning was the learning yeah so do you know what happened didn't go to Mexico but then did get to fly jet planes and go on a uh it was like a road trip but in the fighter jet to regional Queensland so it ended up being good and actually another opportunity Great. came up some might say exactly Amazing. so I did get to fly some jet planes which is pretty cool but it really you know I think looking back on that it's regardless of that opportunity coming up or not I do think oh there are so many times that I've gone too much down the career side and not made the best choice for me personally because I've been fixated on wanting to look good in front at work or oh, the people pleasing people pleasing so exactly. no from us <laughs> you're way better than I so yeah I, I think as well you know is this going to matter in five years time and also what good can come of this because it's and there's a really great parable I'm not sure if you heard this one there's it's a Chinese proverb yep and there's a man a man and his son are working in the field and the son um falls off the horse and breaks his leg and they say, you know, good or bad, who knows? The army comes along and says, oh, we're recruiting people for the army. Um, your son is eligible age. Oh, he can't come because he's broken his leg. Oh, okay, good. And the story goes on and on of all these, it looks like mishaps that happen, but actually they all become really good things because it's meant that it's sort of steered opportunities. So, um, yeah, I think what good would come from And who knows, if I'd gone to the Mexican wedding, maybe my life would be completely different right now and something else would have happened. Who knows? Absolutely. I kind of am a bit of a believer in what's meant for you won't go past you. Love that, yeah. But I I must agree that that is a really great way to look at life when things are going in your favour or you're enjoying <laughs> your life and you're enjoying this path that you're on. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to people that aren't in the best position um, mm. and are trying to make decisions to navigate so you know the mm -hmm. likes of people pleasers how do yeah. we help them get on the right path to really making decisions that will matter in five years time yeah I think you just it's really looking what I've learned is looking inwardly at myself and really authentically connecting to what matters to me and I've noticed there's so much that I have pretended along the way that I think should be important like for me there's a real pull and I know this is such an ego thing like is it ego is it or is it authentically myself like ego for me is oh, I want to go have this exec role in an engineering company and deliver this big shiny infrastructure project and be like oh, look at me being an engineer there's no <laughs> ego in in that and the you know so and I've chosen this path to have our own business and work on something I'm really passionate about and that really inspires me and wants to, you know, like I'm finding hard to sleep at the moment because I'm just so excited about what we're working on so there's been a deliberate inward look at okay what is it for me and that has been literally like spending time in nature putting aside asking some serious questions to yourself putting aside you know what are those societal expectations we we're talking even earlier today around buying a house like there's this expectation around you know okay buy a house do these things you got to get on the property ladder like all of that that's really society pushing that message is it a message that you authentically believe is that really how you what you would like in your life or is it something else and I think we often so that's one piece of it and I look I acknowledge that people are in, in tricky circumstances we've had our fair share of really difficult situations which you know Renee around um, businesses not working out having to close businesses um, at one point we had an investor in one of our businesses and then the money ran out and we had to let go of all seven staff and stop paying ourselves and it really stuffed my mental health so I know when I was in those situations um, particularly that one I had to go okay what does it look like to to rebuild and just get back on track so in that moment I went and got a job as an engineer and got a really a job that I could do very easily because I needed to get my mental health back on track so it's obviously going to depend on the situation, but um, there are definitely some foundational things like finances for me that I had to kind of get those those things sorted. Um, but it is really asking yourself the hard questions and stopping and thinking. And I don't think enough people actually really stop and think today. I agree. What do you think? Thank you for sharing that. That was really authentic. And um, I think it just goes to show that even though uh, we all might look like we have our stuff together, um, life is tricky. There is chaos we have to overcome. Um, and to that point, you know, making decisions today that will matter in five years time really does come down to knowing yourself incredibly well. Um, you know, we all go through moments of chaos and stress and our mental health can be affected. And I think that 
um, you know, making sure that you don't make decisions when you're going through those really hard times mm. or if you need to make but decisions. When you're yeah, yeah, when you're compromised, you can't make good decisions. As Felicity <laughs> said, when we're fatigued, we spill coffee on ourselves and park at the wrong locations <laughs> and <laughs> it's chaos. Same with flying, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, in those moments where you realise you keep making mistake after mistake, you know you need to not fly and to remain on the ground. And that can be a really hard decision when you've got commercial pressure or people around you that are expecting mm. a certain outcome. Um, so for me, I would say if you need to make decisions during distress, uh, you need to go and lean on your network of people. Mm. You need to sleep on it perhaps. If you really need to make a decision and you don't have that network, um, don't make that decision during duress or when you're emotional yeah. because um, you might not make the best decision in that time. Mm. Um, that will matter in yeah. five years time. Yeah, and that's certainly, I think it's the, the long term, it's the ongoing thing too. And one of the things I implemented when I was going through that really tough time was journaling, taking time for myself. I started doing yoga, which I'd never done before. And it was such an incredible experience is really connecting with my body and who I am. I drank less, I stopped drinking coffee after midday. And there was a few boundaries like that, that I put in place to go, I need to have more of a muscle to take care of myself mentally. So when I do have those difficult situations show up, then I've got that resilience there that I've kind of been banking on yep. for a while so that if there is a tricky situation, then I can navigate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think another great tool is, uh, you know, we've talked about having value alignment and really knowing what your goals are, but having that vision for your life, um, which is hard. I mean, when we sit down and think about what does our life look like in five mm -hmm. years' time, um, you know, most of us are flying by the seat of our pants. So that's where you've got to be quite aligned with your values um, have people around you that push you and emulate where you want to be or where you want to go um, or keep searching for new skills and mm. and um, equipping yourself with the knowledge to make the best decision for you yeah. too. You just reminded me, I think this would be, I'm stop talking now. This one is a great episode. <laughs> one of our mentors who actually is an incredible mentor of ours. He's, he's passed away. He literally said, I'm going to be such a good mentor to you that you'll name your firstborn child after me. And we were like, this guy is full of it. What the heck? Anyway, Amazing, the confidence. Winston's middle really name is uh, Francis, Frank, our mentor. Shout out to you, Frank. He has passed away. And I'm so glad that he was alive to hear that we did actually have that in the name. He's planted like, the seed. <laughs> well done, He was Frank. an incredible mentor. He knew what he was doing. Oh, he was so good <laughs> and so inspirational, completely changed our lives. So, you know, totally worthy of our son's little name. And what was, you know, one of the amazing things that he taught us was, is that if you don't know your goal, if you don't know where you're going, you know, it's related, I'm not a pilot, but, you know, if you don't know your destination that you're flying to, then you can't actually figure out your flight plan. So I always have, here's what, you know, the five-year vision and even the long-term life vision looks like. And we've got, if you walk out that door, Renee, you'll see that it's on the whiteboard out there of our five-year vision, because if we don't know where we're going, then we can't make decisions in the present. And I feel like it's very, very difficult to make a decision today if you if you don't have that future thought in mind and if I am finding it tricky to make a decision where you know should I should I go to the wedding should I not well if I'm trying to figure that out then that is a clue for me to go okay then I'm not really clear on that end destination because I can't make a decision right now so if you are finding that you're being indecisive I know that that really has helped me notice that there's something that I need to go have a look at and go work on yeah absolutely couldn't agree more Awesome. Well, I think that's a wrap. Will this matter in five years' time? Tell us what matters to you. We'd love to hear from you. Send in your questions and we will answer them. You've been listening to Promoted with Felicity and Renee, the podcast that gets you promoted and be great when you get there. Thanks for having us.